Hey everyone, welcome back to today's episode of Prime News, and I want to remind you to enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Bundle giveaway through the Gleam Dot Island down in the description. Once we hit 50,000 subscribers at some point, hopefully soon, um, we'll be announcing the winner for that giveaway. Uh, we have a lot of great stories for you. I apologize for Prime News being a bit later today, but you know what? Enough of the apologies. Let's just actually get into the news. <laughs> So our first story is actually about Mortal Kombat 11 on Switch. Why? Because they finally gave us a gameplay trailer for the game. And while I was concerned and made a video about my concerns on the fact that they seem to be secretive of the gameplay, the trailer itself looks really good. Now, of course, this is a trailer. And as a trailer, it's always probably going to look pretty good because they're not going to show you any potential bad things. But still, we finally get to see Mortal Kombat 11 running on a Nintendo Switch. And while they don't show a ton of gameplay in there because they show a lot of cutscene action as well, which, by the way, also looks really good on Switch, what we did see of the gameplay here actually looks really good, which isn't surprising considering that many media members that have gone hands-on have already stated as much. So, hey, look... Great news that Mortal Kombat 11 is looking just fine on Switch. So, well, there's still that other news about how, like, oh, you have to download an extra 16 gigs even if you buy the physical version. At least there is a physical copy of the game in the box, unlike a certain other game that I just don't even want to mention anymore. The Xbox One S all-digital model has been getting a lot of attention lately, first due to some leaks that happened out in uh, Germany and such, and now, well, because... A bunch of YouTubers actually have the console on hand and have opened it up. And uh, yeah, needless to say, it's a pretty lazy digital box in terms of what they did. But it also makes a lot of financial sense from Microsoft's point of view when they're really more focused on what the next Xbox is going to be as well as xCloud. Essentially, all the Xbox One S all digital console is, is an Xbox One S minus a disk drive. In fact, the board they are using still has all of the connectors to just hook the disk drive back up. Um, there's even the eject button is still inside of the case, even though you can't see it from the outside of the case. And obviously, it's literally the exact same shell as an Xbox One S, just minus the slot in the front to actually insert a disc. So basically, it is an Xbox One S minus a disc drive, and they're charging it $50 less than what they charge for an Xbox One S. And they said it will always be $50 less than whatever the MSRP is for an Xbox One S. So if the Xbox One S pricing drops, so will the pricing of the all-digital console. Now, I don't know who this is going to actually appeal to, and there's been a lot of criticisms of this system, from them not putting enough development time into it to not putting enough storage in it, uh, how they could have shrunk things even more, and they definitely could have, but this was obviously the cheapest option Microsoft had to release an all-digital box just as a test. I think what we have to remember is this all-digital box is just a market test. They're not something they're planning to sell millions of units of. It's not something that they think is going to pave the path for the future. I think they just want to gauge what the interest would be on the consumer level to save some money minus the drive and buy a digital version if there's any interest in it at all. Personally, I would rather just find an Xbox One S normal on sale or on the secondhand market for around the same price. But I think it is interesting to at least test the market with something like this as Microsoft might be willing to release two different versions of their next Xbox, both a digital only and a physical only version, which might have more research and development put into it. And at that point, uh, be able to have a bigger differentiator and maybe price points between the two. But I honestly think that this is something that needs a bit more discussion. Uh, and so I wanted to bring it up. So uh, it's also interesting because the initials of it obviously come out to the Xbox One SAD console. Uh, and I've seen a lot of hot takes and negative takes on this system. I don't really have a negative outlook here. This is just a market test. It wasn't something that they were ever going to spend much time research and developing. So we'll see. Are people willing to sacrifice 50 bucks to not have physical games? I, I don't know. I guess uh, the market will decide. The Smash Bros. Ultimate 3.0.0 update has arrived today. In fact, it's probably playable right now. Uh, it wasn't earlier today. I know some people are waiting all day to get that update. But Nintendo dropped a big video uh, yesterday. 
and uh, really last night, and it basically said, hey, here's Joker, watch Joker, here's all his movesets, here's his special abilities, here's his final smash, here's his stage, which like changes colors based on like which uh, Persona music being played, because they have Persona music from Persona 4, Persona 3, and Persona 2, so because of that, you know, depending on which game it's from, it'll change colors of the stage, uh, ending animations, they also introduced the stage builder, which we already knew was coming, but now we actually get to see that stage builder in action, uh, they introduced some new additions to the online app, uh, the Nintendo Switch Online app, where you can now like upload videos and download videos and uh, purchase characters and download stuff, and oh, I don't know, it's basically everything that you could do digitally uh, in inside the game. You could basically now do on the phone app. They introduced an ability to uh, not only like make clips of your gameplay, but now edit the clips together. Uh, introduce new Mii Fighter costumes that are going to be seventy five cents each and are not part of the Fighter Pass. They are being sold separately. Um, I don't like that but it is what it is microtransactions are just not going to entirely go away in smash anyways you could buy joker individually for six bucks or you could just get the fighter pass for 24.99 and get all five fighters even though we don't know what the next four fighters are in their stages and all of that jazz they didn't announce any new fighters right now uh that's probably something that you will see in a future smash direct or a future nintendo direct or whatever uh so yeah whatever it lands today it's probably already here i bet many of you are smashing away uh, no, I did not purchase the Digital Fighter Pass because I don't believe in purchasing content until I know what that content is, and uh, I don't really care about Joker enough to be willing to make the $26 plunge, but we'll wait and see uh, what the other characters are, and heck, it might just take one character to be like, alright, I might as well buy all of them. Ubisoft is in the news today for something that is both sad but also good for them anyways. It's very good PR. I don't know if you guys pay a lot of attention to you know worldwide news outside of video games, but if you do, you probably heard that the Notre Dame Cathedral caught on fire and a huge chunk of it collapsed and it's... It's been a bit devastating for people, not just in the religious community, you know, like myself, who's a Roman Catholic, but more so devastating for people that view it as a landmark piece in Paris. Uh, we don't really build a lot of cathedrals anymore, or hardly at all, so it's kind of a relic of, of days gone by. And uh, to see it, it, you know, just falling down, to see the spider falling was pretty devastating for a lot of people that like it just as a as, as, as a sightseeing thing, you know. Um, it'd be kind of like seeing one of the great pyramids in Egypt just collapse in on itself. Uh, it would be pretty devastating uh, just to people who view it as a part of history. Well, Ubisoft has decided that not only are they going to give away um, Assassin's Creed Unity for free for, you know, a period of time here, uh, which obviously features heavily... Notre Dame, Ubisoft has also donated $500,000 towards the restoration of Notre Dame. Uh, there is obviously a, a big fundraiser going on to try to get enough funds to basically rebuild the cathedral from almost the ground up in many cases. And uh, it's, hey, good good on you, Ubisoft. I mean, you feature that, that landmark um, in your games and to show that kind of support, you know, regardless of religious affiliation is just nice. And uh, I understand that you know, you could look at this as Ubisoft's just trying to take advantage of an opportunity to get good PR, but I don't really care. Um, they just gave a large chunk of money and gave a game away for free uh, just to kind of show that this actually affects them in some way. Ubisoft is also a company located in that country, uh, so it, it has a, a more personal stake for them than maybe it would for some of us over here in the United States. Nintendo Labo VR sales are in for Japan for its first week, and it actually had a pretty decent debut. It came in at number two on the Japanese charts, moving 26,634 units. This is all according to Famitsu. Now, remember, we can't do media create numbers anymore because they're now private and hidden, and the pay to access them is a little absurd. Maybe I'll talk about that another day. Um, but Switch does own eight of the top ten software sales in Japan, and uh, the sales of the Switch actually increased to 54,000. 1,101 units from about 46,000 a week ago. Uh, is Labo the reason? I don't know. There's also Final Fantasy X and X2 that released in Japan as well last week that debuted it at the number three slot. Uh, but hey, whatever. Um, it's pretty interesting just to see the Switch units kind of see an increase there after they were gradually decreasing for most of the past month. Also interesting note, uh, the Nintendo Switch sits about 60,000 units behind the lifetime sales of PlayStation 4, which are at 8,022,000 units for PlayStation 4. 
That essentially means that by the time April is over, Nintendo Switch should be passing PlayStation 4 in lifetime sales in Japan. A feat that's interesting to note because the Switch has only been on the market for basically two years and a month. So two years and a month, and the Switch will be passing the five, six, seven years of you know, PlayStation sales. So hey, that's really, really cool. Good for Nintendo. It's a good omen. And hopefully things continue to go well for the big end for the rest of this year. Uh, Sony, I think, is pretty focused on PlayStation 5, if you can't tell from the news that we reported on yesterday. Now, our last story for today is a rumor, but it's an interesting rumor. Uh, it could easily be faked. We're not able to verify all of it because it comes from a website called Bedu.com, which I think is Chinese or Japanese. I, I honestly tried to figure it out on the fly here, but I couldn't, and I needed to get stuff done for Prime News, so I apologize for not knowing exactly if it's a Chinese or Japanese website. But uh, they had some interesting pictures that appeared to be from manufacturing, uh, as well as some additional information on some of the parts going into uh, a potential Nintendo Switch Mini. And, well, it's interesting. Uh, first off, as you're seeing on screen, there is a solid shell, uh, so no detachable Joy-Cons. There's no kickstand. You cannot dock this system to do docked mode on TVs, uh, but the cartridge slot still looks the right size for the Switch cartridges, and uh, in fact, here's actually a size comparison of what this looks like compared to a normal Switch, and you can definitely see it's a shrunk down version of the Switch. Uh, very colorful. There's apparently going to be multiple colors in general, uh, but there's some some differences here as well with the hardware. So while the CPU is not going to see any changes, the GPU is actually clocked at 384 megahertz, according to this rumor. And that's actually higher than what Switch currently runs at in handheld mode with the GPU, where it's currently clocked at 307 megahertz. So again, it's about an 80, 80-ish megahertz increase, which could make a difference in stabilizing maybe frame rates or some of those dynamic resolutions or whatever. No information on obviously what the screen is because they were just showing the shell here. Uh, so I assume it's probably still a 720p screen, especially since it's shrunk down more, which makes the resolution not matter even you know, even, basically matter even less. Uh, there also is similar battery life, so it could just be using basically the exact same battery or something. I don't know, but uh, similar battery life to the current Switch is part of this rumor. And yeah, there's going to be multiple colors of this thing. I, it, I don't know. It just looks very interesting to me. Um, I'm not really sure what to think about it in general other than, hey, you know, this could be real. This could be fake. I'm not sure what to believe, but if it is real, uh, it's believable because it basically falls in line with everything we've been hearing about what a Switch Mini would be, which is basically a, a handheld version of Switch, handheld only, no detachable Joy-Con. I mean, not having the kickstand, I mean, you, you can't detach the Joy-Con, so why do you need tabletop mode? Uh, very interesting. Uh, we'll have to see if this thing is legit. I do like that if it is legit, Nintendo's going with uh, some colors here. I like the colors. Uh they kind of did that with the 2DS, and I feel like that's maybe where they got inspiration for going with colors here, where, we're, hey, we're going to go all these different colored shells to kind of make it pop and be more vibrant for children. But there's going to be a lot of adults that are actually going to be, um, that this is going to appeal to. And the color shown is obviously like Nintendo Prime Blue, so how could I not be excited about that? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool, and I kind of sort of hope it's legit if this is what, you know, Nintendo, the direction Nintendo is going to go with Switch Mini. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in. Obviously, I'm rocking my uh, Giannis Adekatumbo jersey here. Uh, good luck to the Milwaukee Bucks. Hopefully, you thrash. Well, I mean, I don't know. Do I really want you to thrash Detroit Pistons today? I mean, games are a little more entertaining when they're close. But, I mean, as a Bucks fan, it kind of feels good to feel like the Warriors for a little bit here and just dominate in the playoffs. So, we'll see. Hopefully, uh, they win tonight for my sake. If you're a Detroit Pistons fan, I'm sorry. Better luck next year. Um, anyways, I would thank you guys for tuning in. And I'll catch each and every one of you in the next video.